I have been on the board since September of last year. So it's been, uh, you know, an immersive experience to try and understand more about the sector and your business and um, what's important uh, to the community in, in Blue Prism. Would I give myself advice um, when I'm younger? And I think there's a few things I'd say is one, um, it's not enough to just be really good at your job, right? If you are ambitious and you want to do bigger jobs and um, and have more influence in an organization, I think I learned a little late um, that it's not enough to get your job done and to do a really good job, that actually you have to do that and you have to make personal connections and you have to take the time to talk about the job that you're doing. And I think that's as real today as it was when I started out um, 25, 30 years ago. And, and, and I think a lot of women and, uh, and maybe just sort of people from the non-dominant group, I think are not encouraged to blow their own trumpet. It's a slightly embarrassing thing to do. Um, and you're sort of told, look, if you, if you put the work ethic in and you do a good job, someone will recognize you and somebody will give you the opportunity. Somebody will take a risk on you. Somebody won't. Um, you know, everybody's just too busy sort of surviving themselves. I think you need to do a great job, but actually do a bit of personal PR as well, even though it's uncomfortable, even though you may have sort of been discouraged uh, from doing it in your upbringing. But it is about finding an authentic way to help others understand what you're doing and the value you're bringing and the impact you have. And then, you know, encouraging others to take a risk on you. So I'm going to take my own advice from earlier, as uncomfortable as this is going to be, so bear with me, uh, I'm smart right and i work really hard um and i care and i put effort in and i pursue uh, my ambition and i um i have learned as i've gotten older to stand up for myself much more effectively and and to take the space i'm entitled to take and you know when you're younger you tend to give that space away way too easily to people who are not more entitled to it than you are um, but you learn, you learn to toughen up and you learn to claim your space and decide, well, why not me? You know, I've educated myself. I've spent those long evenings, those long days, making sure I know what I'm talking about. I've pushed myself forward and taken the risks. I have got up in front of leadership teams and boards and I put myself out there. What, what, why can't I hold my space? And so, so I think I think it's that actually, and I think it's as I get older, having the confidence to say that, yeah, I'm good at this, um, and I'm okay with that, and I'm happy in my skin by saying I'm good at it. I have lots to learn, and I'm still learning, and I'm still investing in myself, um, but I'm good at it. Yeah, I like it because uh, it, it's not suggesting that the culture is fixed um, and set. And that's what I, I like that because I think culture is continuously evolving. I remember somebody um, gave me the analogy years ago, uh, a designer I was talking to and I was talking about culture work I was doing and they were saying, you know, uh, culture is always evolving and it's, it's, it's rich and it's changing. It's like um, if you go into someone's home and you go and you go to, to their refrigerator, their fridge, and they have all these photographs, you know, up on the fridge of the family and holidays and days out and stuff. And you suddenly realize actually that they're all kind of old and they've all they've all got stuck in a time war. Right. And and so, you know, company cultures are exactly the same. They can't get stuck to a certain point where everybody decides it's perfect. Um, it they have to be continuously evolving and you have new pictures and new photos and stuff layering on over and over again. So so I, I like the idea of culture ad because it's much uh, um, fairer representation of actually what happens with the culture. I don't think we have to shave stuff away. I, I think that's how it feels, I'd say, um, if you are in the dominant group. I think that's how it feels. If if there is no support for you and you don't see how you will fit in this new world, and I think politically, we've seen a lot of that in the last across the world um, in the last couple of years where, you know, people in dominant groups have felt they're losing uh, their status and their position um, and they're feeling they're losing their uh, their power in the world. Um, but actually, I think, you know, all of all of the studies, all of the literature shows you that um, actually the more equality there is, 
um, the more the whole of society moves forward, the mm. happier society becomes. And actually, there's some really interesting studies done, particularly in Scandinavian countries, where you know wealth is. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to take a political position on this one, but, but but you know, society is happier because everybody has done a little bit better, right? Rather than there being sort of sectors of of or groups that have done better at the at the expense of others, and so so the science is there. It it shows that actually we're all happier um, when the sort of the the lowest power, the weakest group in society, has been elevated.